So I've been doing a lot of work with AI for offensive security. And I, as I'm going through whether it's work or it's research, I've been keeping track and notes of what I'm doing. However, over time, these things become like too much, all right? If I need to maybe make reference to a past work or some references to a note, I have to go and then dig into my notes somewhere. And it's just becoming like too much. So I have decided to begin to record some of the things that I'm doing with AI for OFSEC. And then just to serve as reference point for me or knowledge base for me so that I can at least have a place for me to go and be able to quickly refer to what I have done previously instead of me going through a bunch of notes somewhere. And that is what this, uh, these videos are going to be, just me recording series of my videos on just minute stuff. You know, some may be relevant, some may not be. It's just for me to document my thinking or what I'm doing, and hopefully somebody may find this useful. So to start off, I am going to have both um, Kali and then also Windows as the main OSs because some of these tools they have their pros and cons or they perform better in some one area versus the other. So it's always good as a researcher to always have um, options when it comes to different types of OS. So I have Kali here. And before I start, let's go into my um, the specs for my Kali. You do not have to have the same, but just in case you want to know what I'm using, um, I have, you know, 16 gig of RAM uh, for, you know, four processors or CPU. And then I have, you know, uh, 120 for my disk or for my space. Even 16 gig of RAM and, you know, four processors is not going to be enough. But just for you to see, uh, because we're going to run, I tend to run a lot of things locally as a researcher. You don't have to put everything on the remote system. So, you know, a um, platform that you don't understand, right? Or you don't know who is going to see. So it's good to sometimes have local stuff on your machine. Uh, so you see that even though it's 16 gig, I'm going to hit a roadblock sometimes because these platforms and tools are heavy hitters, okay? Okay, so this is my specs. Once we have that out of the way, we need to install some tools. So these are some tools, sample of them. Um, eventually, as we go going through some specific tools, they may have their own dependencies that we may have to install. But for now, these are the tools I am going to install on my Kali. Next, we are going to install um, a toolkit which may not be necessarily applicable in our case because the VMs we're running are CPU based, okay? However, you never know if any one of you or I decide to maybe run these platforms or my setup in a GPU um, you know, system. So I want to still have this recorded. So just in case in the future, if I want to set up or have these things run in a GPU based system, at least I know how to get that also started. So here we're going to install the NVIDIA CUDA or basically the CUDA and then PyTorch on our Kali instance. Okay, so once we have this also installed, now we can proceed to have um, Olama installed. So we can go to Olama's website, very, very easy interface. We can go to download and we'll copy this command, which is for the Linux version to install. And we'll head out and try to install Olama. And off we go. Great. So now we have Olama installed. We can type in Olama and then dash dash version. And that is installed. However, if we type in just Olama and hit enter, these are the options we can also come across. For instance, if we use the list option to list all models, we will see that we don't have any model running or installed. And it's because Olama by default doesn't come with any models. So if you want to be able to communicate or be able to talk to any you know, um, large language model, model, then we need to pull in a, you know, a model, okay? So what I'm gonna do is going back to Olama. If we go into the model section, these are all the available models. We can pull and then use Olama 
to talk to. For instance, we can even filter out by the type. So for instance, you know, some models are very capable with specific uh, needs, right? So for embedding, if that's what we're looking for, if we're looking for a model which are very good with vision, we can just narrow down by vision or just tools or a combination of any of these capabilities. We can also sort out by popularity. So for instance, if you want the most popular ones or if you want the most newest models, these are the options we have. Um, if we go to the home, we'd actually have a sample. If we go to the actual home of Olama, if you notice, they have a sample of them here, the ones which are much more popular out here um, you know, as well. Um, so um, in our case, we just want to start with a, just a, um, we just want to start up with just not too heavy weight model. So Mistral is typically the go to uh, because it's smaller in size and it's good to start up when it comes to deploying your own local model. The second thing, too, is the models can be very, very big or large. All right. So even with the Mistral, this is just, you know, this is 4K. I mean, um, 4 gig. All right. If we go back and then we take a look at, let's say, DeepSeek R1, that can go up to over 400 gig. All right. So be very, very cautious about which model you pick because the size may also matter. All right. So in our case, we just want to stick with Mistral for now and then use that to start. You can also have multiple models. You can also, you can have more than one model pulled up into your box so you can have more options. So once you have the model that you want to pick, you can always go down and then read more. Sometimes it may even give you benchmark and then see how it stacks up against other models so you can make a good decision. Once you make a decision, then I'll go here and then just copy this command. It's very easy to pull a copy of a model. And then we'll go back to the command line and then off we go to pull a copy of the Mistral uh you know model okay so once we have a model pulled down by olama the first thing you see here is a prompt here where we can actually send a message to that particular model and then we'll test and see if it's working but for now let's just do the forward slash buy so we can get out of olama now this time if we use the list again we can see we have Mistral now installed as a model. Let's quickly test out and see if all of our setup for Olama is working by using this command. So we are running Olama. We are using the Mistral model, and this is going to be our prompt to write a Python script that adds two numbers. And this is what has happened. It's actually giving us the information. The problem, though, as you can see here, is and this is the difference between having your own local LLMs versus, you know, talking to a remote one. Because you're running this on a virtual machine, it is not as powerful as you would have it from, let's say, you know, much more powerful platforms such as ChatGPT, DeepSeek, and then also Google Gemini. Uh, but at least it's good to have your own private one. You can run this on your hardware because this is just for research purposes and demonstration. That is why I'm having this copy run on VM. But as you can see, it is not the ideal or the best way to have your local or private um, large language model running on a virtual machine. Nevertheless, now we have this confirmed that we have our Ulama running. We've been able to deploy a model using Mistral and also tested that it's been able to communicate and give us or perform some sort of um, an action for us. So this is a Python command that you know is giving us um, an example test function for that, and then also an extra information provided by this, uh, by this language model. Now, one thing too you have observed is Olama runs on command line. There's no graphical user interface that you know you can have like a chat box that you can talk to, like the way we have with ChatGPT and um, Google Gemini and DeepSeek. So that is not with um, you know, Olama. We'll find a way to um, talk to Olama from a graphical user interface in another video. 
However, if we want to confirm again that the service is running, we can actually access it through a browser, um, you know, at the endpoint that it's listening on. So this is where Ulama listens on or runs on.